welcome everyone in the lecture series of 13c nmr spectroscopy this is the first lecture on 13c nmr spectroscopy in this video we are going to learn the introduction regarding 13c nmr proton coupling and decoupling of resonance decoupling and some examples of 13c nmr spectra first we see introduction of 13c nmr spectroscopy or some basic concepts there are three isotopes of carbon 12c 13c and 14c out of these three isotopes 12c that isotope of carbon is most abundant its natural abundance is about 98% but it is nmr inactive because its nucleus is not magnetic in nature as it has even mass number and even atomic number its spin quantum number is zero therefore it is nmr inactive the another isotope that is 13c its natural abundance is very low that is 1.1% but it is nmr active the its nucleus shows the spin quantum number i is equal to 1/2 which is greater than 0 therefore 13c nucleus shows nmr phenomenon the third isotope that is 14c is nmr inactive its nucleus is non magnetic in nature as it has even mass number and even atomic number that is out of three isotopes only 13c is nmr active the 13c has low resonance frequency and it is very less sensitive than 1h1 nucleus that is proton its signal intensity is very low the gyromagnetic ratio of 13c nucleus is about 1/4 than that of proton that is 1h1 nucleus therefore 13c nuclei always have resonance at lower frequency than 1h1 nucleus for example 1h1 nucleus measured at 60 megahertz frequency for that 13c it requires only 51. megahertz frequency that is 1/4 of that 60 megahertz frequency the chemical shift range for proton that is 1h1 nucleus is usually in between 0 to 12 delta ppm that is chemical range for proton is 0 to 12 delta ppm but for 13c nucleus that chemical shift range is very large and it is in between 0 to 220 delta ppm due to large gap between 13c chemical shift values signals are well separated in the spectra in case of 13c nmr also tetramethylsilane that is tms is used as internal standard the solvent used for 13c nmr is cdcl3 that is commonly used solvent and in case of 13c spectra due to deuterium coupling the carbon gives triplet with relative intensity of 1 to 1 to 1 and the signal is obtained near about 77.3 delta ppm but the signal intensity is very low as the signal is for only that carbon only the number of signals in 13c nmr spectra corresponds to number of equivalent set of carbon atoms in the molecule we know that in case of pmr spectra the signals are obtained according to number of set of protons and in case of 13c nmr signals are obtained according to number of set of carbon atoms in the molecule pmr spectroscopy gives indirect information about carbon skeleton of the organic molecule but in case of 13c nmr it gives signals of all carbon atoms hence it gives direct information of carbon skeleton in the molecule the factors such as hybridization electronegativity inductive effect etc also affects on chemical shift values of 13c nuclei that is shielding and deshielding that is due to shielding and deshielding the chemical shift values 
may be low or higher that is signals will be obtained at upfield or downfield the chemical shift difference in 13c spectrum is about 20 times in comparison those shown by the 1h1 nmr 20 times greater therefore 13c spectrum is much simpler than 1h1 nmr and the spectra can be easily predictable now we see coupling and decoupling in 13c nmr in case of uh, organic compound the presence of 13c and 1h in the molecule both are magnetic in nature and both have the spin quantum number i is equal to 1/2 therefore the uh, two types of couplings are possible one is coupling between 13c and 13c nucleus and another is in between 13c and 1h that is homonuclear coupling between same 13c and 13c nucleus that is homonuclear coupling but the natural abundance of 13c is very low therefore probability of two 13c nuclei being together is very very less therefore 13c 13c coupling it is usually not observed or it is negligible that is there is no signal multiplicity or splitting in case of 13c nmr due to 13c 13c coupling that is out of these two couplings 13c 13c coupling is very very negligible or it is not observed the another coupling is of the type heteronuclear coupling that is coupling between two different nuclei of atoms that is in between 13c and 1h in that case also there are two types of proton couplings the coupling between carbon and hydrogen which is directly attached to it that is it is a one bond coupling one j coupling and the coupling between carbon and hydrogen which are at the vicinity or present on adjacent carbon atoms that is two j coupling there are two types of coupling homonuclear and heteronuclear homonuclear 13c 13c is negligible heteronuclear coupling there are two types of coupling 1j coupling and 2j coupling and due to proton coupling between 13c and 1h if it is directly attached to it the coupling constant is about 100 to 250 hertz and if there is a coupling between 13c and 1h which is not directly attached to it that is between nearby protons that is 2j or 3j coupling it is near about 0 to 60 hertz and due to these two types of couplings signals are split into multiplets the signal of carbon split into multiplets and the complex spectrum is observed the multiplets from different carbons commonly overlaps therefore it is difficult to predict the spectra if both types of couplings that is if there is a proton coupling the spectra becomes complex in nature this complexity is removed by proton decoupling now we see proton and decoupling in case of proton and decoupling the coupling of all protons with carbon is removed it is also known as proton nice decoupling or broadband decoupling that is coupling between proton and 13c is removed and in that case the sample is irradiated with 1h1 resonance frequency and the spectrum is seen in 13c resonance frequency then we see only singlets in the spectra that is in proton decoupling protons are immediately come under resonance without coupling with 13c and due to proton decoupling 13c nmr spectrum is simplified and only singlets corresponding to number of set of carbon atoms in a molecule are observed and also due to proton decoupling there is nuclear overshare effect is seen that is noe effect is seen and due to noe effect the signal intensity of 13c nucleus increases
the signal of carbon increases due to noe effect thus the carbon atom which not bears hydrogen atom it gives low intensity signal in 13c nmr that carbon is quaternary carbon and it not shows which uh, it shows low intensity signal in the 13c spectra in 30c nmr the signal intensity is not proportional to number of equivalent carbon atom that is there is no relation between signal intensity and number of set of carbon atoms now we see uh, some spectra for example uh, very simple molecule ethanol 13c proton decoupled spectra of ethanol due to proton decoupling only singlets are seen corresponding to number of set of carbon atoms there are two set of carbon atoms and as there are two set of carbon atoms we see two signals of carbon in the spectra the signal for ch3 is obtained is near about 20 delta ppm and in case uh, the signal of ch2 is obtained at 60 delta ppm as this carbon is directly attached to oxygen and that is electronegative atom therefore d shielding takes place and the signal is obtained at down field now we see op resonance decoupling in case of op resonance proton decoupling the coupling of protons directly attached to the carbon that is 1h coupling is retained and the coupling of nearby protons that is 2j coupling and 3j coupling is removed such type of proton decoupling is known as of resonance decoupling again remember in that case the coupling between carbon and the proton which is directly attached to it it is retained and the coupling of nearby protons is removed due to of resonance decoupling the signal of 13c split into multiplets according to n plus 1 rule where n is the number of protons attached to that carbon atom the following types of signals are obtained for primary secondary tertiary and quaternary carbon atoms in case of primary carbon atom that is in case of methyl group there are three protons which are directly attached to carbon the signal split in according to n plus 1 rule 3 plus 1 that is equal to 4 therefore methyl group proton gives quartet in the spectra similarly ch2 group proton that is methylene group proton gives triplet in the spectra the tertiary carbon that is methane carbon gives doublet in the spectra while the quaternary carbon in which there is no uh, proton is directly attached such quaternary carbon gives singlet in the spectra thus with the help of cmr we can easily recognize the primary secondary and tertiary carbon atoms in the molecule quaternary gives singlet ch gives triplet ch2 gives triplet and ch3 gives quartet the of resonance decoupled spectra of ethanol in proton decoupled spectra we get only two singlets but in case of op resonance decoupled spectra the multiplet of ch3 and ch2 are obtained like this the chemical shift values are same but the for signal for ch3 we get the quartet as three protons are attached to carbon the signal for ch2 we get as triplet as two protons are attached to that carbon atom and that is the signal for solvent that is the signal for internal standard thus in op resonance decoupled spectra the splitting of signal takes place according to n plus 1 rule where n is the number of protons attached to that carbon atom we see some examples for example 2,2 dimethyl butane in case of 2,2 dimethyl butane there are four set of carbon atoms this is a this these methyl groups are equivalent these are b set of carbon atoms 
this is C and this is D and we get four singlets in the spectra. This is proton decoupled spectra of this compound. In case of cyclohexene, in that case there are three set of carbon atoms A, B and C. Out of three set of carbon atoms, the C set of carbon atoms are sp2 hybridized state. Therefore, the signal for C type of carbon atom is greater than 120. Uh, this is also remember that in case of sp2 hybridized carbon atom, the signal, the chemical shift value for such carbon atoms is above 111 delta ppm. And when the value are greater than 111, we definitely say that that carbon atoms are in sp2 hybridization state. This is the example of cyclohexanone. In case of cyclohexanone, there are four set of carbon atoms, A, B, C and D. In that example, we have to remember that the signal for carbonyl carbon is always greater than 170 delta ppm. In this case, the signal is obtained at near about 220 delta ppm. That signal indicates presence of carbonyl group. The A set of carbon atom, there is a CH2 group, therefore it gives triplet. B set of carbon, it gives triplet as there is CH2 group. For C also we get triplet. For, for D, as it is quaternary carbon, it gives the singlet. The another example is toline. In case of toline, there are four set of carbon atoms, sorry, five set of carbon atoms, A, B, C, and D, and E set of carbon atom. A set of carbon atom, it is in sp3 hybridization state. Its signal is obtained near about at 20 delta ppm. As it is a CH3 group, it gives quartet. The signals for C, D and B, we get doublets that is as there are CH groups. But for E, we get the singlet that is quaternary carbon. And the for aromatic carbons, the signals are the chemical shift values are greater than 120. That is all these signals are obtained for aromatic carbon that is carbons are in aromatic ring. The only the signal for A it is obtained at near about 20 delta ppm. Thank you very much.